we're at that point in the market. You ask 20 people whether they're bullish or whether they're bearish, you're going to get completely different answers because there's a rift in the market. There's people calling the tops and there's people calling the bottoms. And I'm going to mix education with analysis whilst the markets are a little bit shaky at the moment. So we're going to start off on the weekly. We're going to look at what levels need to hold on Dogecoin on the weekly, higher time frame, macro time frame. And then I'm going to show you, we're going to go through a simple task together where you can identify on any of your cryptocurrencies, on any of your portfolio, how you can tell when something is changing in the market. These candles are just buying and selling. These candles represent good days and bad days. These candles can tell if you're feeling shit or if you're feeling good. So we're going to look through there and we're going to analyze when we can tell a trend is changing very shortly. But first and foremost, what do we need to hold for Doge in the short term? So we're on the weekly. And you can see what we can do is analyze where's Doge been before. It was 74 cents at its all-time high. And where is it now? It's at 15 cents now. So what level do we need to hold in the short term? You can see this, which was a long accumulation range. This in the short term is the level that we need to hold as support. And you can see that we flipped previous resistance to support. So that's an RS flip, guys, and that's holding at the moment. So when do we know that this, in, this is invalidated? When this candle breaks and closes below 12 cents, that's showing that we're back in this range. This accumulation range, just as an example, this lasted for, before we broke out, 116 weeks. So that's over two years, guys, in this accumulation range. And the longer that you're in an accumulation phase, the better the levels hold, the more chance that you've got of holding support. So we're currently holding support on Dogecoin. The bottom of this range is 12 cents. The top of the range is 15 cents. So what we can do now is go into the daily and you can see a little bit better. We can stick our trusty Fibonacci tool from its previous swing low to see what levels are holding on the daily. So there's the previous swing low. Pop that on there. And you can see, bam, we've had a reaction from our 61.8% retracement. Now, what concerns me here, this is a clue that we're getting. We've put in a higher high here, and then we've put in a higher low here. We've put in a new higher high here, and then something's changing here. We've put in a lower high. So in the short term, for this to be invalidated, we need a break and a close and a continuation. How can we identify if we've got a higher probability of getting that break and a close and a continuation? And more so, how can we protect ourselves? So we can just stick on a simple trend line on here. This simple trend line is going to tell you one thing. If we take out this high here, which is sitting at 16, 0.16619, if we take out that high, then we're having another chance at the right shoulder with a potential of a higher high. If we get the higher high, that's obviously the continuation. So what we don't want, guys, is we don't want a break and a close below this level here. Because what's what's been created here? We show you time and time again on this channel, one of the biggest reversal patterns, which is the head and shoulders. So this is going to invalidate the head and shoulders once we go past, take back the 38.2% retracement, which is sitting at 17 cents exactly. For this to hold us support, and then we can go back, and we're either going to do a double top are we going to break and continue to the upside? So that's what we can, what's what clues we can get in the short term, right? Okay. Now I'm going to show you how you can follow a trend and identify when something's ultimately changing because we talk about higher highs, we talk about higher lows. This is how you can tell. Right. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to get our path tool up. You can see on the left hand side, toolbars, you can pick up the path tool. This is simple but effective. I just want you to understand from a psychological perspective, you can't build this into your trading, but from a psychological perspective, it helps clear your mind, right? Okay, so we had the big bull run. We had this move to the upside, this huge surge to the upside. We had no resistance in front of us, and that's why it went through like a hot knife through butter. And then 2021 happened, bam, we got absolutely slammed back down all the way to 15 cents, which is where price action is now. This is short-lived. This can be so short-lived and you get slammed back down within a space of weeks. And that's why it's important to make sure that you either have a plan for taking profits or you dollar cost out as you dollar costed in. Flip it in reverse, guys. Dollar cost out in the bull market, dollar cost in, in the bear market. Right, okay, so we've put in a new lower low. What does that mean? That means that the bears have regained momentum and with some velocity as well. So we've come back up. The bulls have had their turn here. The bulls have had their turn and they might as well not have because we didn't even try and create a new high. So we've come back down. We've come back down. We haven't then created that new high. We haven't broke this previous level. And then the bears 
slammed it back down. So each time that you're coming up here, bulls are getting less of a move, bears are getting a longer move. And that's showing that the bears have got full control during this crypto winter, during this bear market, the bears have got full control, putting in those lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, until something changes, until you make that base. The bigger the base, the bigger the space. You need to remember that is when has something bottomed out? Because you can see here, we haven't managed to put in a new lower low. The bears haven't managed to put in a new lower low. And then the bulls have had their turn, not quite put in a new higher high, but they've certainly had a bash. And then you get the choppiness. What happens here? What's happening during this choppiness? We're not putting in lower lows. We've made a base. And when you make a base, the more touches that you get, the more that's supported. So each time that this comes back down and tested this as support, that's showing that that's holding. So let's pull this up here. Now, ultimately, once you've created that big base, you're waiting for a higher high. And that's the important thing. And that's what we got here. Got this higher high, which has take, taken out this previous high here. And that's what we said needed to flip as support. And that's exactly what's happened. That has flipped as support. So it's a simple process, guys. Just get your path tool out and just have a little play. Join the dots. Are you creating those higher highs and higher lows? Are you creating those lower highs and lower lows? Go and have a look, guys. When is something bottoming out? When something's bottoming out, can you see a long base, a long accumulation phase that you can take advantage of? Because these accumulation phases, they might not look much, but let's just measure from the bottom to the top, 175%. So 175% to the upside. If you'd accumulated each time at the bottom of these bases, each time, that's 175% move to the top of that. So it's not to be sniffed at. This is an amazing place to accumulate at the bottom of these ranges. So just, it helps you identify, it helps you take a step back and it helps you understand something is changing in the market. And then ultimately, once you get this big crack, breakthrough resistance, that's when it's changed. So if you did find it useful, guys, go and check out my altcoin analysis video. Let me know what you want me to cover in the next one and I'll see you.